I'll talk into the thing to, to record it. Yeah. yeah. So you, you don't think you'll be walking around? Because like I, got, I will do the I'm just presentation from here. Yeah. So I'll come back. Yeah. Okay. 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 No, all good, all good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We'll just wait. Sorry, are you taking it from now? Or are you I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I'll be back. Hey, Jelena, are we rolling? Yep, good to go. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll just get started anyway, and then if anyone else joins, attends, we can... At the Min, um, well, Chris already gave my introduction. My name's Adair, and I'm a, a senior account director at LinkedIn. Um, when I finished school 20 or more years ago, don't want to admit that yet, um, the world was very, 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 very different, right? Looking for a job was different. What career you could do was different. How you network and market yourself was very, very, very different. So the purpose of these sessions, and um, my role at LinkedIn is to work with corporates, schools, uh, not-for-profits, like many very different uh, type of organisations. Um, I work with them on how they use LinkedIn to hire new um, employees, um, to upskill and develop their employees. But also we run sessions like this called Rock Your Profile, where it really goes through um, what is LinkedIn, the import importance of having a LinkedIn profile, and then once you've got it set up, what, where to from here? What do I need to do? How do I network? How do I grow my audience? So that's a bit of the agenda that we'll be going through. So getting to know who we are and what we do. Um, we're going through like kind of your profile and what we kind of call are the top um, steps we would recommend you do. There's so many ways you can fill out your profile, but what we would recommend you do as your first protocol. Then once you've set up your profile, what do you do from there? Leave it dormant? Do you need to do stuff? Do you need to connect with other people? Do you need to start networking? And then we'll have some time for Q&A at the end. Um, also happy to answer any questions throughout the session. It's, you don't need to sit there in silence and listen to me talk. But, um, you know, it, we've also got time at the end if you think of something along the way. So, first of all, we'll get, get to know LinkedIn. So this is a short video. Or it may not work. I do that now. That's it. Okay. Only video. Only video. Um, as you can see from that short video, the world is more inclusive these days in terms of, you know, when you, when you set up, when you finish school, you don't have to decide what you want to be straight away. You can change, you can evolve, you can you develop new skills. So the purpose of LinkedIn is to help you master those skills and help you network. And we really have a really lofty vision globally. Um, we are an American company, but we came out to Australia about 12 years ago. Um, this year we'll celebrate our 20th birthday. Uh, and our vision is to create economic opportunity for every member of the global workforce. This means something different to everyone. So economic opportunity might be making a connection. It might be finding a mentor. It might be upskilling in a particular hobby that you're really interested in or something that's gonna further your career. It might be just reading things that are happening in the industry or the news. So economic opportunity means so many different things to different people. And we wanna make sure that we're helping as many people on the global workforce. When we look at that in numbers, 
we look at what we call the economic graph. So we're kind of really taking a step back into really a LinkedIn world here. Um, so a lot of LinkedIn lingo, I know. Um, but this is what we build our network on. So we've got 900 million members globally on the platform, and that's 12 million members within Australia, which is about 89% of the workforce. Um, the APAC region is the fastest growing region on the platform. So as I mentioned, we're a US company that used to be the fastest growing region, then it went to the, you know, Europe and the UK but APAC as a region is the fastest growing region. And that's because we've got up and coming um, countries, like we've got, you know, China's coming onto the platform, we've got India coming onto the platform, the growth in Australia coming onto the platform as well. So, so many extra areas that we can connect with others. We've got 58 million companies, 14 million jobs on the platform at any one time. So that's somebody posting a job on the platform that somebody could apply to. Skills, 39,000 skills. And skills is a bit of a new buzzword in, in the world that I live in or the world that I work in. Um, we're really trying to help the world focus on people being hired on skills rather than where you went to uni or what your pedigree is or who your parents were or, or anything like that. Like we want people to really, the economic opportunity, it doesn't matter you know, how rich you grew up, it's what skills you have. And there's 129,000 schools and 443 billion points of knowledge. And what that means is anytime, anywhere on the network, somebody updates their profile and says that they've moved roles from company X to company Y, or they've moved location, or they've made another network connection, it updates that knowledge point. And what we can do from all these numbers and these big, huge numbers that like, what does it mean for us? We can understand what the future of work is. So at LinkedIn, we can understand what skills were really prominent about five years ago and what the future of skills are. So when COVID hit nearly three years ago, um, I was working at LinkedIn at the time. We never really did any virtual meetings. We always did face-to-face -face meetings. That's all we ever did. And then all of a sudden, all we had to learn about was Zoom and Teams and none of us knew how to even do anything. So we had to go out and develop our skills in those areas. So that's a really, really small but kind of generalised way of people developing skills and changing their networks. And we want people to understand that as I mentioned earlier, you can change your career, you can change your skills, you can develop into new skills if you want to, or what we call now as like transferable skills. So that's why I keep saying skills is a big buzzword in my, in my world is because your career journey back when I finished school 20 years ago is very different to the career journey of, of our children and, and of the students here. So that's a bit about LinkedIn and that's who we are. Um, now I want to start talking about your profile. So kind of taking that, what does this mean for you guys and setting up your profile? So I've got a bit of a croaky voice. Don't, just like one of those things. I've got two young kids. I think I just like pick up anything that they've got. Um, but what you need to do if you do not have a LinkedIn profile, all you have to do is open up a, your Google Chrome or whatever browser you use and go to linkedin.com. And then it's like any other professional or social media network. It's you kind of put in the details of your name, your email address, create your password, um, any other type of information that you would normally put in. But I have to say here, the security measures on LinkedIn are like no other. We understand the world of professional, well, of social media networks or in data breaches and cybersecurity and everything that's going on. It's really, really important to us that we keep your um, details safe. They're private. And we really pride ourselves as a company as members first. We wouldn't have anyone if we didn't have our members on our platform. So what we need to do is making sure that we keep all those 900 million members safe. And safe in, in terms of, um, and this is information that probably we'll be talking to your children about or, or your, the students about is um, there's no room for cyberbullying, there's no room for harassment, there's no room for any of that. There are so many different channels on LinkedIn where you can report if you see any of that happening to yourself or you see that happening to somebody else. Um, there's so many different avenues that you can do to um, 
put that forward that they will investigate it. Like there is an even a LinkedIn email, just like LinkedIn, in, link, no, SOS at LinkedIn.com. Like it's one of those ones if you feel like you're being attacked or there's something happening to you because they will have a team investigate that because um, we do not want anyone on LinkedIn feeling like they're being unsafe um, or of any details are being changed. So following this session, I would recommend everybody go to, if you don't have a profile, going to linkedin.com and setting it up and putting in all your details as you normally would. Absolutely, yeah. If you've got, if you've got, if you've got your phone or you, if you don't, don't worry. But yeah, if you've got a phone or you want to kind of go in and do it now, go ahead. Or even take a photo of the screen so you remember what it is. Yeah, okay, I'll keep going. Because now I want to get into a couple of different, uh, I guess, examples of profiles. And then, like, these are the reasons why it's really good to set up a, a unique profile and an authentic profile. And then I'll go through why you should be doing that and how you can do it. So Peter is actually a real life person that I work with at LinkedIn in Sydney. So he's one of our marketing team. And this is just a quick snapshot of his LinkedIn profile. So instantly, you don't even need to read anything, but instantly you know who Peter is, what he stands for, what he where, what areas that he works in, what he likes to post about about his profile. Um, you can change that banner across the top for it to be something that's authentic to you. You really get an idea of who this person is from a professional aspect. So we need to make sure that we're putting a professional authentic lens on it. It's not a social media platform like Instagram or Facebook or Snapchat um, about possibly being someone that you're not this is a place that you be your own authentic self and we can see peter is showing up as his own authentic self on linkedin if i put this side by side by another real peter literally another real peter that's actually based in the uk just a quick snapshot of both of them next to each other peter tram based in sydney up at the top you can get an idea of you know who he is and Peter Tran down the bottom is not so much. I don't know who Peter Tran is down the bottom. He's self-employed. So my suggestion to him is probably to put about what he does as a role or what, you know, what kind of company he does. But it's just to show people who you are and what you do because that helps with that networking ability so that people can actually connect with you and have like-minded conversations. So they're the two differences. And then these are the reasons why it's always good to really, I guess, keep your profile authentic and fresh. And how we do that is by a few different steps. So as I mentioned before, there's so many different ways you can fill out your profile, but what I'm gonna do is go through probably the top 10 that I would highly recommend to do. And the first step being is adding a photo. And the reason why you add a photo is because people like to connect with other people. And what I mean by that is I like to look and see, okay, I, you know, I can have that feeling of warmth with that other person. And we know that if you have a profile photo that you get nine times more connection requests, you get 21 times more profile views, you get 36 more times more messages of people trying to connect with you and understand who you are, um, what background you've come from, what your hobbies are, what you're interested in. It just really drives that connection as a face-to-face -face person. Thing. Our next recommendation is recording your name. So this is a relatively new feature that we've got on LinkedIn. And what you can do is hold your phone up and you, and you can do it on like your mobile phone, you don't do it on a laptop, and you just record your name into it. So it's about 10 seconds long, go into a quiet room and do it. Um, I actually don't have this, but you probably think I should be a name being a dare shearer, it's a bit of a mouthful. Um, but it's a way for, again, if you are going into a job interview, and that person looks at your LinkedIn profile, it creates that connection of like, they're not nervous because they know how to pronounce your name. You don't have that awkward, hi, you know, they said your name wrong. Do you correct them? What do you do? It kind of tries to limit all that. Um, and it's just an easy way to make a connection with somebody else as well. Yep, you literally just say, you, you know, it's not, it's not an introduction. You literally just, I would say, a dare shearer. That's it. Yep. So you don't have to, yeah, don't have to, it's not like an introduction, it's not an elevator pitch or anything like that. It's just a way to pronounce your name. 
Adding pronouns. So again, this is a very newer, uh, new feature that we've got on the platform at the moment. And this really stems from the idea of showing up as your authentic self and for people to understand how to relate to you or what pronouns you want to be used if they were calling you up for a job interview or sending you an email. Very similar to the one where you pronounce your name. It's just trying to alleviate that anxiety of not knowing how to call someone or not knowing what their name is or how to pronounce their name. Um, people we know as the world is evolving and changing, they, they're very, if they're really strong by their pronouns and they want to be known by them, they will put that there. So we need to make sure that we're respectful and inclusive of that. So it's a new feature. And I must admit, any of these features you do not have to use. These are our recommendations. Add in your industry. So what we would recommend here is if you are in a particular industry, say education or marketing or construction or whatever it is, it's really good to add that in here because then we know that like-minded people are going to connect with you. When I would talk about this with students, I would more say what industry do you hope to be into or what do you want to get into or do you have a hobby and that's the industry that you want to kind of put there. You can update any of these features at any time. So it's not like, you know, your child's ads in construction and then they have to be in construction for the rest of their lives. It's not about that. They can update that over time. But it's about what industry that they're currently in now or what do they aspire to be in. So for students, I would probably say, um, what do they expect? Well, what would they say if they could choose any industry as their first job, what would that be in? Drafting a compelling summary. So this is where we kind of say it's our elevator pitch. So this is where you really put a little blurb, few sentences at most. It's not about, you know, war and peace and telling everything that you've done or everything that you're really into. But how would you talk to somebody in third, if you're introducing yourself in about 30 seconds? What would you say? What, if you're in the workforce right now, you'd probably say, you know, for me, for example, I would say like, my name's Adair, I've worked at LinkedIn for three, three and a bit years now. Um, I'm really interested in helping organizations do X, Y, and Z. Um, so just keeping it really short and simple. For students, I would recommend them saying more kind of very similar to the industry. Where do they wanna go? What do they wanna get into? Hi, like, you know, hi, I'm Sandra and you don't have to say your name because it's already on the profile, but you know, I'm really interested in getting into marketing. Um, I'm studying marketing currently and I'm looking forward to getting to a marketing agency. So kind of like putting what your next step would be. The funny thing about it, people talk about whether they write it in first person, second person, like what, like it doesn't matter. It's whatever's authentic to you. So you can write, like I could write a dare does this or I could write, I do this. There's no rule but just make sure that you keep it the same throughout the whole, all the sentences. And then you, it's authentic to the way that you wanna be um, spoken to. So as mentioned, keep it short and sweet. So it's not about writing all your careers or accomplishments, but keep it in short and sweet. If I was a student at school and I was say a prefect or a captain or something like that, maybe that's somewhere where you would include it because it's at the top of the profile. So there's an area on LinkedIn where you start to be able to add some color. So when we talk about color on LinkedIn, it's again, very different to other social media platforms. There's not many places where you can add pictures, but the areas that you can is where in this featured content place, where you're able to, if you post about projects that you've worked on or anything that you've done on LinkedIn, you're able to pin it to your profile so that when somebody goes and looks at your LinkedIn profile, they can actually see what you've done. So um, I would recommend as like Santa Sophia starts to maybe post content or if something like, you know, someone's post content about what they've done, they can actually pin it to their profile so that they know that, you know, this is something that they've been involved in at the school. Yeah, we would just need Jelena to tag that student to make that connection yep. and then they could put it to their profile. So again, yeah, it just really helps to highlight, I guess like give it that kind of color to their profile. If they've been involved in um, an academic award or a sporting achievement or something that's gonna help elevate them or even if they've done like an internship somewhere, 
or a um, study, extra study, like those work experience, there's so many different ways that you can add um, when somebody's looking at your profile and possibly like a hiring manager in the future, they can be like, wow, this person's an X, Y, and Z. I can see they've been involved in these activities. And detailing your work experience. So this would be more, not so much for the students, but maybe so much for the teachers and the parents. Um, kind of you're able to put in very similar to a resume, but not exactly the same. So you know how in resumes you kind of list all the um, tasks and descriptions and everything that you've worked on. Here is just a matter of putting in um, where you've worked, your job title, the dates that you've worked there, and any key projects. So it's not all the duties and tasks that you've done in that role, but just any key projects that you've delivered on or that you're proud of, or even um, you know if you've worked with stakeholders and you wanna elevate that, it's kind of just showcasing your top you know, two to three for each role. Um, that's where it's a little bit different to a resume. People are like, okay, well, I just need to put my whole resume onto LinkedIn. It's not about that because we know people online have a very, very, very short attention span. So what, what are they going to do when they scroll through your LinkedIn profile is kind of pick up on a few different points. They're not going to read blurbs. So just make sure that's impactful and short. Um, for students, what I would recommend doing in this particular space is if they've done internships or they've done um, holiday camps or whatever it may be that they're really proud of, um, if they're coaches of, of football teams, soccer teams, or dance, like something that they're really proud of that they're able to put in here. So work experience for, you know, people that have left school, but for uh, children, it's more around, um, yeah, roles and responsibilities and, and teams that they've been a part of. Um, on that, I should say that LinkedIn is for 16 years and above. I probably should have said that at the start, um, but you can only have a LinkedIn profile if you're 16 years and above. Um, we do not let any students or well, anyone underneath that have that because it's just more that professional network. Again, very, very different to other social media networks out there. When I mentioned um, about the hobbies or the coaching of the football team or the soccer team, there's also areas where you can put volunteer experience as well. So if your children or yourself have any volunteer experience, whatever it may be, you can again add it to your LinkedIn profile. It's just to help give a well-rounded idea of to who you are. Um, when you're in the professional world, you'll have your um, jobs and, you, and kind of what you've done. Then you'll have your hobbies, you'll have your volunteer experience. You can have so many different things. So it gives the well-rounded picture. As you're a student and you're kind of going through, you kind of start to fill it in slowly. And then as you get to your first job, that's when you can put that professional experience into it and start to add in over time. So we recommend that you only have one LinkedIn profile and that's it for life. You can evolve it, you can change it, you can update it as much as you want, um, but you shouldn't really be taking things down. It's more about adding the layers as you go through your career and as you add more vo um, volunteer experience, more hobbies onto it. Another area on LinkedIn, um, as you scroll down your LinkedIn page, is where you're able to add skills and get endorsed. So what we mean by this is I, on my profile, I could add in the skills of, say, communication, or if I was an accountant, accounting, and I would, I would add the skills that I think it takes for me to do my job. And then I could get, or I could ask somebody in my network to endorse me for those skills. So for example, on the screen, um, the profile has put there their you know, accounting, small business taxes, communication, and you can see 32 people, or 32 people have been able to endorse um, this profile for that. And so you're able to endorse people, and then they're able to endorse yourself as well. So you can do it both ways. And again, this is really helping add color to your page because um, we talk about transferable skills. Just because you work um, at one particular job does not mean that you want to move into another industry or another career. So your profile, the hiring manager might go down your profile and be like, okay, they don't have the like you know the standard work experience that I would expect, but I can see that they've been endorsed for these type of skills. I'm open to a conversation with them. Um, I guess I've, I've only been at LinkedIn for you know three and a bit years. 
prior to that, I actually worked at a marketing agency. So when I went for my job at LinkedIn, they were like, why, like, this is very different for you. But I'm like, transferable skills, transferable skills. And it, and it works, so you, just because you've worked in one job does not mean that you should be um, just into that role for the rest of your life. You're able to evolve and change now. I think the stat is about you have, I think it's like six to seven different careers or six to seven different types of jobs throughout your life these days. And like that is gonna evolve and get higher as the next generation comes up. So this is why we say these skills are very important. When you have experience in your profile, Yeah, yeah, it's a mix. So you would put, um, so so what I would do, see if I was looking at my skills now, I would say, okay, what skills do I need to be strong in to do my current job and kind of include those? And then what skills did I need to be successful in my jobs prior? Because I may not need them or use them now, but they're still a school that I've earned or achieved over time. Like, so... It's just, and, and you don't have to list all your skills if you don't think it's relevant. Yeah. So it's about kind of looking at it and thinking, okay, what role do I want to get into next? And what skills will be helpful for me to get that role? Because you can, you can add all these different skills in, but as for the example, it will start to filter the top skills at the top and there'll be a show more button. And as I mentioned before, people are time poor. Are they really going to click show more and go through all of your different skills? Possibly not. So look at the skills that you've got in your current role that you're really proud of, probably the role prior, or if you're looking to move into a different industry, what skills do I need to get into that industry and that I know I can show that I can do now? Did you pre-test the accounting small business in there or is that from a drop down? It's usually from a drop down, yeah, yeah. So with job titles and skills on um, the network, we have what we call like standardised titles and for that exact reason because um, people call just so many different job titles, so many different names, people call skills so many different ways. And to make it easier for people to search for them is to have like a standardised text. So um, small business taxes would have been a drop down that they were able to put in there, yeah. Not, not based on anything. So if you, so um, I could probably, I, I, like I've never even done accountancy before, but I could probably put that as a skill if I would really wanted to. Yeah, so you are you are like very much in charge of your profile in that aspect. So um, that's why when I say, like it's always good to include what you want to do now and what you're proud of now, but if you're looking to change and evolve and, and move into a different career, there's nothing wrong with adding that in. LinkedIn won't say you can't put that in because you don't have that. Um, so, and, and that's kind of one of the things that we want to make sure that people really show up as like their authentic self. We don't want them to be lying about like, oh, I've got this skill. Um, if they do, they're always found out eventually because if somebody invites them in for a job interview, it never goes so well. So um, it's all about showing up as your authentic self and, yeah, and including the skills that, um, yeah, are relevant to you. But there are no, like, who are we to say that you don't have this skill? So we can't, we can't judge that part. And then there's last two parts in terms of your profile. Um, obviously, a location, always put your location. And when we say location, um, we think it's much better for people to find you if you put your general location. So I would put Sydney. So you may not live in Sydney City, you might not live in the postcode 2000, but you live in the greater area of Sydney. So when people are searching for people on their platform, they're not gonna actually put in Pitt Town, Box Hill, Schofield, like, you know, like, cause they don't know that exact suburb. They're going to just put in Sydney. So always try to put in, um, I guess, the closest major city if you're in that region. Um, if you lived in the Blue Mountains, you probably wouldn't put Sydney because it would be too hard to travel to work. Well, actually, maybe not. I've got a few friends actually up there. But, um, yeah, it's all about kind of putting that main general area rather than your specific location of a suburb. And accomplishments is one of the last ones um, that we do to say to fill out your profile. And this is when you really talk to awards. So, like, a, um, you know, if you're a school captain or if you've won a certificate at school or you've come first in maths or, you know, you've done a really good cultural 
um, accomplishment, make sure that you put it yourself in there because that's really creating um, an idea of who you are um, as a person and then hopefully puts it out there to the network about what you want to do next. So that's what our, our kind of, I guess, ideas are. And again, you can have so many different areas that you can fill out. But I've got a few slides around what you've done once you set up your profile. So you've gone onto LinkedIn.com, set up your profile, you've put your photo up, you've put your industry, you've put all the details there. It's kind of like, what do I do now with it? Like, does it just sit there? Do people find me? Do I network? And there's a few different ways to start getting involved with the LinkedIn community. And it's as easy as um, following companies. And this is what I would recommend to when we talk to your students. Oh, well, not your students, your, your um, children is more around start following companies of where they want, if, if they've got an idea of what industry that they want to get into. Or if they think, okay, this is like, you know, if they want to get into accounting, okay, what do I need to do to start getting into that? You can follow as many companies as you want. And what will happen from your, um, when you start following companies is when they start posting from their LinkedIn page, because companies have a LinkedIn company page, they will start to see that um, content and they'll be able to understand what they're doing as a business. So following companies is our number one um, thing to do once you set up a profile. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the schools, the schools have like company pages with or organization pages, um, and so you can start following schools. Universities have pages as well, so start following universities, see what they're up to. Influencers, okay. Well, our version of an influencer is very different to a version of an Instagram influencer. Ours are more um, experts in their field, um, but you can start following influencers, say like Bill Gates, Richard Branson, Oprah Winfrey, like those really, really big ones that are out there in the world. Or you can start following uh, um, influencers, probably like for a better word, of people that are CEOs within companies that you want to join. So you can be like, okay, well, what are they talking about? What are they interested in? Um, is this something that I can learn from them that I can start networking with different people? So there are two ways that you can start following different um, areas. And what you can do is you can search for them a number of different ways. So say if you didn't know who to follow, you, you, you weren't sure of what the company name was and okay, well, how do I find these companies? You're able to start searching using very similar to like other social media platforms, like the search, uh, advanced search filters where you're able to put in the location or the industry um, and then it'll start to show your list of companies or influencers that fit those categories. So then you can start to understand who they are and what they do. And once you start following it, you'll start to get a content feed of people that you follow and are connected with. But at any point, if you do not want to see that um, information anymore, you can unfollow that company, you can unfollow that influencer, or if you don't want to see anything that's similar to that anymore, you can kind of delete it from your, um, from your area, or you can also report it as I mentioned before about that security and how we're really strong and making sure that all our members feel secure. If you feel like it's a bit distasteful or aggressive or whatever it may be, you can report it. We wanna make sure that when you come to your LinkedIn feed that it's information that's gonna help you be successful and in your role or as you grow up in your network. So as you come to LinkedIn, um, you'll be able to see in the background that's shaded there, it will be your, your LinkedIn content feed where it'll be people that you've been connected to and what they're posting. It will be the influencers that you're following and it'll be the companies that you're following. And then of course, you're also up to, able to add to the community. So, you know, this is very much up to how people feel comfortable about it as well. So. You can get all that information and understand what other people are doing, but you're also able to share content and information from where, you're, where you sit as well. So sharing on LinkedIn is a bit of a jump and not everybody wants to do it straight away. People kind of want to just sit there and consume the data and information and, and read the articles. Um, but once you feel comfortable and you want to, you're able to go in there and very similar to other social media platforms, you're able to share quick if you want to like write a little you know, blurb on the article that you've read or something that's happening in the news that's relevant to you. Um, just make sure that uh, it's professional. 
and making sure that you're showing up in the best way possible. Um, we want to make sure that LinkedIn is a professional website for not only yourself, but for all our members. So it's very different to posting on say TikTok or, or Instagram or Facebook where there's filters and there's people trying, you know, trying to be something different. This is more about commenting about what's going on in your professional network. And then we've got some best practice practices for sharing updates. So if you do take that leap, we want it to be your own authentic voice. So making sure that you are making a comment that speaks to your, you as a true individual. Um, post frequently, I guess that's you know, determined by different people what frequently means, but um, some organizations and businesses that I work with, they're like, okay, we really want our employees posting a lot about content and we really want our employer brand to grow. Um, so posting frequently is one of their kind of rules that they want to include. Um, you're able to start a conversation as well or share your point of view. Um, also sharing your point of view means respectful of other people's point of view at the same time. Um, including rich media means um, including photos or links or something that's going to help elevate your post and, and kind of create that engagement and be able to create an opportunity for reciprocity. So, you know, giving back as much as you're receiving as well. At the end of the day, LinkedIn platform is all about our members and if we only rely on certain members to add things and other people to be quiet all the time, it's not really going to create that um, opportunity for everybody. And then last slide is key takeaways. So we need to remember when you turn up on any or any platform, any internet website, that your brand remains after you leave the room. So anything that you put on in the internet remains on the internet, whether we like it or not. So what we like to say here for LinkedIn aspect is show up on LinkedIn as you would show up to a client meeting, as you would show up to an interview for your new role, as you would show up at school. So when we're talking about students, like, you know, making sure that you're showing up in a respectful, honest and authentic way. Um, keep your profile fresh and, fresh and relevant. And what we mean by that is not like you have to take a new profile feature every month or, or update any of, the, any of the information. It's if you get a new job, update that. If you've got a new hobby, put that in. If you're something you're really proud of as a project, add that up. Um, I think my profile picture is about eight years old, so I hope I still look the same as that. But so it's all about updating your profile picture, as I mentioned. It's just making sure that it's authentic and as um, fresh and relevant as possible. When we talk about being authentic, creative and purposeful, again, it's that same um, train of thought of making sure that you're being authentic to who you are. Um, people look at LinkedIn profiles very similar to resumes. So recruitment agencies would look at your uh, recruitment profile, uh, LinkedIn profile very similar. And if you turn up to an interview and you look and act different to your profile, you know, it's, it doesn't really make much sense. So making sure that it's authentic um, and you are who you are on your profile. That also means um, in terms of the skills that you have, the roles that you've been into, um, if you lie, that's kind of, you're only going to be found out. It's only going to wrap your rep reputation at the end of the day because people, you know, it will get reported that you've got a scam profile. It'll go through our system. Like, unless we don't want to go down that road. Um, and we want to make sure that you're gaining knowledge and insights that add, and perspective that add value to you. So every time you come to LinkedIn, we want to make sure that you leave with something new, whether it be a new connection, whether it be learning a new skill in, you know, five minutes, because some, you know, some videos on LinkedIn learning are two to five minutes. Or is it just reading an article on LinkedIn? So just something finding something that's going on in industry as well. We've got a whole news team um, that actually writes articles about things that are going on in the news. So it's keeping current and up to date. And then last and lastly, but not least, is being proud of the work um, and really bring, bring that story to life on LinkedIn. So we want the, your profile to showcase the best of you and who you are. So um, we want you to be proud of what you put on your LinkedIn profile so that other people can understand um, and share in that with you. And that is it. Brilliant. Yeah, go, yeah. I can let me I'll disconnect and then I'll get I can add my thing in and then I can show you I can show you live because I think I added to the in, um, internet before I'll show you what it actually looks like no. I think I got it let me just dismiss
Okay, it should. Okay. Oh, please, the Today I had a really good. He said, just put a photo, it's like a good representation of you when you walk into a meeting. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and, and and that's actually a really good point. We find that making sure your photo is just of yourself. So most, lots of people have photos of like them with their dog, cat, child, whatever. Just make sure it's a picture of your face. It only has to be really small, but make sure it's a picture of your face. So this is my LinkedIn, my LinkedIn um, uh, news feed as I've signed in just now. Um, if I was looking for a new role and I wanted what I wanted to do, I would just go up here into jobs. And I can see where, like it starts as a just to me, jobs where, where I'd be a top applicant if I wanted to apply for a new role. So what LinkedIn does in the background, it starts looking at what roles I've been in previously, how long I've been in my current role, um, and what industries that I've been in, and, and what location, of course, as well. So it will start to suggest jobs to me. So you can search up here, say, I'll just do this one, relationship manager, it will start to give me roles, relationship manager in Sydney, you see, and it will start to list all the jobs down the left-hand side. So it would just be a matter of me going through them and clicking apply. So this is just me of searching, um, and it was a drop-down thing that I already did. Um, relationship manager at the top here, you can see here, you can give the location. Um, you know, I'm gonna take these two companies out and just search everywhere, any company. Um, you're able to see date posted, uh, experience level. So you're able to really go through and filter the type of jobs that you would like to be. So if I went into this client service manager role, for example, it is with this Kingston Financial based in Lane Cove. Um, I'm able to see the person who's hiring for the role, the money that they're, they're um, offering. And as I scroll through, because I've got a premium license, I'm able to see a little bit more, it's a bit of a LinkedIn thing, um, but you're able to give, get a bit more information about the company and what they do. Again, if I click through to the next one, it would be a very similar thing. So that's the way that the company has set things up. So what was the other one? Kingston Financial, I said easy apply. There was another one that did said apply. Was it a Canva one? So there's a so companies can set up their link link with LinkedIn in different ways. If I click easy apply now, what will happen is it will apply to Yogurt Digital, so that company. What it will do is it will send my details directly through to them. Some companies, when you click on apply take you through to an external website, which might be their corporate website, which sometimes might have more details to fill out. So yeah, where it says easy apply or apply is completely up to the company's application process. Because yeah. some have like, um, I'd imagine schools working for children, like there'd be some certificates that you need to put forward. Some other companies just, you know, want you to apply straight away. Exactly, because what will happen if, if, if you click Easy Apply and it goes both ways actually, most people go to LinkedIn then to see um, who you are, yeah. you know, and what, or what, you know, what jobs you've done recently or um, what experience you have. Um, one thing that really is really helpful as well is, where is I saw here, Yieldify. I actually don't even know that company, but I've got six mutual connections with the hiring team. So that means from my network on LinkedIn, I know six people within their hiring team. So if I wanted to apply for that role, I would probably contact one of those people and be like, hey, I can see that you're you know, hiring for this client service manager role. Um, can you help me out with the interview process? What's going on? Like, it just helps, um, gives you an idea of how to there's no side doors. It's not like you're trying to get around it, but get information to help you do it better in your interview process. Or um, they could say, yeah, Derek, you're actually not like ready for this role, or right for this role. Like giving you that intel to make it save your time and their time as well. So that's the way that when you look for jobs. Um, and then the content feed is just a matter of, as you can see, you can start to see people who are posting different things, what they're up to, 
you know, when they've started a new position here, as Annie did a little while ago. Um, and you're also able to start, uh, if you go up here and search, here's a different company, another company that I work with actually, um, this is what their company page would look like. So um, Macquarie Telecom is actually one of the, a, a really big kind of like data center company and they also work um, in a number of different other divisions as well. Um, but say if I wanted to get into that, I would start, I follow them because they're one of my clients, so I better see what they're up to. But I, um, I may have thought I would go here and click on their posts and see what they're putting out there as who they are, the projects that they're winning, um, what they're doing in particular. If I wanted to see what jobs that they've got available, I'm able to see they've got 45 job openings at the moment. If I click see all jobs, it'll give me that same view as before, but all these jobs at Macquarie Telecom Group. So um, as I recommended earlier around, if you or your children or students really wanna get into particular fields, I would recommend following like five companies at least in that field. Um, and then that way they can start to learn what's top of mind for them, what's happening in those different companies. Um, because gone are the days is when you'd be able to like, I really wanna work for this company and, and then you know hopefully eventually get there. It doesn't work that easy anymore. You need, need to be opening your mind and not work for many different companies, especially as there's new ones coming out. There's also what we have here. Could, yeah. Yep. Yep. So yeah, so this when you log in, this is what it looks like. So this is your feed. Then it would be a matter of clicking your profile. This is my profile, as I've mentioned, <laughs> my picture's a little bit old. Um, but this is what it looks like um, for others to see. So if I wanted to edit anything, it's just a matter of hovering over the pencil or changing any of the details here. Um, as I scroll through, again, my little elevator pitch, I could hover over the pencil and update it if I wanted to. My LinkedIn, where I've, what I've done here, you can kind of see what I've done in my career previously. I did visual arts and design as a uni degree, very different. So when I talk about people having different careers, I'm one of those people as well. Um, but you can kind of see kind of what I'm interested in in terms of the people that I'm following down the bottom. So when different people look at profiles, this is what they see. I'm gonna jump into Matt because now we're not gonna be able to see any of those edit, edit functions because it's not my profile. Matt has a much more filled out profile than I do. Um, but this is, again, he's filled a lot of these details out in terms of the featured area, um, things that he's posting, his experience, what he's done. So this is what a profile would look like to um, anybody else that's not yourself. Um, and as you go through, it goes quite long. So when I say making sure that what you include is like short and sharp, it's because if you start scrolling for a long time, people start to lose interest. Um, yeah, any other kind of questions about how it looks like or how it works, differences between the different sides? Yep. Yep. So Macquarie Telecom, the company that I um, showed you before, so I work with them particularly on how do they find people through LinkedIn. So that's what they want to work on. So they have all these different types of um, different types of like licenses. We call them recruiter licenses, and they have the ability to use different filters and contact people. So. Um, for roles that they've got. So we saw they had like 45 roles, if I remember off the top of my head. So what they would be doing, um, their hiring team would be sitting there on LinkedIn, putting in different filters, I can't remember the job titles that they had, and finding people based on their profile. Right. So it's, that yeah. could be the first intro to one of the um, things that we need to be aware of to be safe on LinkedIn with some of the scams that we come through. So be mindful of that and that's what we'll be sharing with yeah. students as well. Yeah. Yeah. 
And and because we and there's a few different ways that you can check that. Like if Macquarie Telecom, if some okay, let's actually we'll, we'll use that as an example because that was an easy one to do. If I go to their jobs, so if somebody from their LinkedIn uh, from their hiring team contacted me about this executive assistant role. I could go and actually check that they've got one of those roles available, first of all. I could also see whether that person that's contacted me actually works there. And you can usually check, see, see it says he is his business development, Kenny Stewart. I can see he actually works at Macquarie Telecom and the role is actually based on their company page. So this role is legitimate. If it was like some company that like you it just looks you know ain't too good to be true but it, it didn't have a presence or a profile on LinkedIn that's when you'd be wary and you think is this actually a real opportunity is this a real person um but Kenny I go to his profile and I actually know like I've met Kenny before but I also know he's a, like like this is not a made-up profile this is a legitimate profile about what he's done in his career what, and he's the one that's looking after that particular role. So it's about using your kind of like your internet smarts about you as well. Um, it's making sure that when people do contact you, you do not have to respond. There's no obligation for you to respond. You can ignore anyone. But if you're looking for a new role and Kenny contacted me about that business development representative role and I was actually interested, I, w- I could respond back to him um, and still no obligation by responding back, but open up an avenue of conversation so that you could probably possibly have like a phone call or then turn up for an interview. So it's very similar to the likes of, say, Seek. People apply for jobs on Seek. This is the same sort of thing. Um, Seek also has a very similar thing where you they can search for your profiles as well. So they have, like, I think it's called a CV database. We call our recruiter. It, it's a very similar sort of thing. People searching people's profiles to try um, find you for their shorter time to feel um, rather than having an open role, hoping that somebody applies. It's kind of like trying to flip that on their head. Yeah, it's like it, it's headhunting. Yeah. Got, back in the day, like 10, 15, 20 years ago, headhunting was more like C level, CEO, CFOs. They're the only ones that got headhunted. Not anymore. Anybody can be headhunted for a role. And if you're headhunted, you're kind of in the driver's seat. So you'd want to be headhunted because then you can negotiate. Um, But yeah, so they can contact you as much as you can contact them. Um, But as I mentioned, there's no obligation for um, responding. You can block people. You can report people if you feel like you're being harassed. Like there are many safety measures that go along if you feel like um, you're being targeted for any reason that that you don't feel secure. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Um, they can, you know, whether they're, um, you know, a team lead in McDonald's role or even just, um, on, like, I can't even remember what they're called. They used to call them cashiers, but I don't think they do that anymore because they're, they're all, like, touchscreen things these days on, on all the... Because, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, <laughs> surprisingly enough, when my, I work with a couple of soft... Um, companies like that like Hungry Jacks is one of my other clients and they very similar because they're like we have a lot of young people that we work with are uh, they so much on LinkedIn and there's a very much a shift in that now so like assistant managers assistant restaurant managers um, franchisees like you know as people move up the chain in um, like quick service restaurants um, the likes of McDonald's and what have you um, there it's great for them to put that on there because these businesses train their employees really 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 well like McDonald's trains her employees really well so it's actually a really good thing to have in your profile yeah a a massive positive and also shows that you're out in the workforce connecting networking um you know being your professional self as well um so yeah nothing wrong with putting anything like that doesn't have to even be um like a restaurant it could be if you worked at Meyer or David Jones or yeah anything like that definitely put that on there Yeah. Um, so I'm a sole trader, 
Yep. Yeah. Would would I bother doing a profile with me, or just do a business profile? Because they're basically going to end up being the same thing. I would. I would do. I would do both. And the reason why I would do both is when you are um, a sole trader, for example. I'm gonna. My auntie is a sole trader, so I'm gonna try find her page. Um, and if you know her, that's hilarious. But this is my auntie, so Gillian, Annie Gillian. She's a sole trader, and so she's created her own uh, page as well, Cressy Property. Oh, it's not gonna let me go to it. Or maybe she didn't create it in the end. I told her to create it, but she's set it up where, because she is um, the person that's going out there doing business, people are connecting with on a face-to-face basis. Your company page is more around what your company does. So uh, what you, like, you know, what you trade in. So if you are, like, do you mind me asking what kind of field or industry you're in? Perfect. So they'd be very similar but your company page would be more around where your company um, is situated, like the location, um, what it specializes in, um, possibly even like opening hours or what you, you know, what kind of, uh, how long you've been in the business for. And then your profile, your personal profile, they'll be connected, but will be a bit more around um, kind of your studies to get to where you are. So, and if you've worked, um, you know, you, were some, you worked at another company before you were a sole trader. So it's kind of giving your history versus your kind of company's sole trader history. Does that kind of make sense and how they're very much entwined and linked? Um, but I would set them up as two different ones. And, and setting up a company page, just setting up a profile, they're all free. So there's nothing like, there's no additional added value in terms of investment that you need to do. It's just trying to set the two apart and if you ever hired someone or you want to hire people, then they can connect their LinkedIn profile with your company as well. Set up your personal one first. Mm-hmm. And then once you've set up your personal profile, um, you'll be able to create a company page. Um, and if you do not know how to do it, it's a matter of just going LinkedIn, create company page. Oh, my spelling and it will be create a company LinkedIn company page and this will tell you step by step on how to do it. But yeah, if you do have questions though, like further on, um, I'm more than happy for you to like contact me directly through LinkedIn or through Chris if you're kind of, yeah, trying to figure that out. No worries. Any other questions? I remember when I first used LinkedIn and then I felt like I got to the disco and my shirt felt uncomfortable with <laughs> you know. Um, I guess, you know, some advice for mm-hmm. parents who are going to explore this and doing things that are new. What would you say are some good next steps if maybe we're not quite ready to throw out the about me and would it just be create the profile and have a look? Yes. Go Absolutely. Yep. Create your profile. Um have a look, see what else, um, learn what other people, uh, like maybe some insights that you can get, some articles you can read. Um, and then if you feel like posting, surely get into that. It's like um, people having like Instagram profiles. People just like to look, some people like to post. So you don't have, there's no rules about you have to post X amount of times per week or X amount of times per year. Um, it's just doing what's authentic to you. So I would recommend, yep, create your profile. I would fill in your, the industry, the profile picture, your location. Um, you don't have to worry about the about me part, leave that out, but just do those three at least. And then start following companies and start following influencers and then start connecting with people. So when I say connecting, you could just, um, who's someone I'm not connected to? Chris, are we even connected? We might not even be connected. Are you Christopher or Chris? Uh, Christopher. You may not even be connected. Oh. And no. You're on Chris. Because, so what you can do and what, what I would recommend doing... 
Oh, I've got it now. I'm done. Double. You're not coming up for me. Well, I'll go to this. I'll, I'll go to this, Chris. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and say, yeah, no, no, all good. But like, just like for this example. So what I would do is say, yeah, yeah, this, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You might need to update your profile picture. No. Um, no, you know. Yeah. So, so credit your profile, put your profile picture, location, and industry, and maybe start to fill in a bit of a few bit details about your past and present uh, professional history, and then start to connect with people. And it can just be a matter of connecting with your brothers, your sisters, your colleagues, people that you work with now. And there's a few different ways you can connect. This Chris, I would hover over more and I would go down to connect. It will send him an invitation and he has to accept it for us to be connected. So if this Chris doesn't know who I am, which I don't know who he is, so it'd be fine. He, we, like we don't have to connect. Or sometimes it might just be connect here. So it, depending on how they've got their profile set up, this Chris looks like he wants to be a bit of an influencer. That's why he's got the follow button there, so I could follow him if I wanted to. Um, but mainly it's just either clicking connect here or clicking more and going down to connect. And then that's when you start to build your network out. Um, so connect with your current colleagues, connect with your brothers, sisters, parents, um, whoever else that you know that has a LinkedIn profile. And then that's, if wait till you feel more comfortable and then you want to take the next step and start posting things. Um, you can learn a lot by just doing that, by seeing what other people are doing, for, by following companies or influencers. So yeah, it's not all about going out loud and, and writing these long articles and you know showing what expertise you have. If you feel comfortable doing that, by all means, go ahead and do it, but you do not need to do that at all. Thank you, I'll probably please you my network is, let's have a look. There you are, Christopher, I'll accept. Oh, and Lisa, I'll accept you too. <laughs> um, but yeah. Yes, good point. Yes, okay, so you can change that. There's a few different things here. In here, if I go settings and privacy, I can change it. So over here it says visibility, and this is profile viewing options. I've got mine in private mode, which means I can look at everybody, and no one's gonna know that I've looked at them. So if I click on that, See, I can see, you'll be in complete private mode. And that was a really, really good point, thank you. Or I can change it to sales specialist at LinkedIn, or I can be anyone who sees, I like stalk or looked at their profile, they'll be able to see who's looked at them. So I've got mine currently on private mode. So whenever I looked at anyone's profile, they won't know I've looked at their profile. Um, it's completely up to you how you wanna, how you wanna do it, but um, I think it might be a bit easier in my role to have it as a completely private mode, but yeah, that's actually a really, really good point. So you, it does stop you from being able to see who's looking at you. Yeah. It stop people from being able to see you? No, I'm still searchable. Oh, just when you look at someone else's page, they don't know. The, yeah, and then I can't see. Yeah. yeah. So it's like you're either, everybody's all in, yeah. Yes, yeah, so either yeah, either, either you're all in private, like you're in private mode and you can't see who's looking at you and you can't see who's look like, or if you're in the top one where it says my, like your name and headline, it means that anybody who looks at my profile, I'll be able to see who's looking at my profile. So it, it's, it's up to you. Yeah, it depends what you're using it for. Um, if you don't mind, if people know that you're looking at their profile, then go for that one. I think if you're trying to make connections or if you're a student, I think that's a good thing for people to know that you're looking at other people's profiles. Um, because especially if you're looking for an internship and you're looking at different companies, they'll be like, oh, why is this like, like you know, student looking, he's in year 12 looking at my profile. Um, 
do they want to, like you, they, they could, there's so many different ways that that could actually be beneficial to you, but yeah, I'm in private mode. So, so <laughs> each to their own, yeah. Well, the, I think it's like it's a very hard one. So all all companies on LinkedIn, um, the way that you know that they're real and legitimate is by the way that they're acting on LinkedIn. So the way that the, what I mean by that is if I just jump back into LinkedIn and I'll just go to like the first company I see quickly, this Easy Generator. I can tell that they're a real company because they've got how many people that work there? 203 employees. And I can see these are the things that they're posting about. So if I went to people and it said one employee and they're asking me for money, I'd be like, who, why, like, why is this person asking me for money? Like, or do you know what I mean? Like, or it just, it just seemed off. But I can see this easy generator has 203 employees. They've all got these different profiles. You can see exactly where they are. Um, you know, I think like there's a few, it's it's about kind of showing up in a very sensible way, I think, on the internet. Um, there's always obviously scams and things that happen out there. So many things that we, we can't exactly control. That's why it's always important to make sure that you are, um, yeah, investigating a little bit further, not offering up any further details that you wouldn't like, if somebody ring you up on the phone, you wouldn't go give your credit card details straight away. You do, you, you think about it. So unfortunately it's the world that we live in now. Um, but yeah, it's, it's about looking a little bit deeper, looking a little bit deeper. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, Adair. That's okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, if, if, yeah, if you have any questions, by all means, you can uh, make a new connection. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>